So I'm Daryl Pullman. I'm, uh, I often say when I'm talking to the people in the iPinch group, I feel like a bit of an interloper because I'm a medical ethicist and I, my contact with uh, archaeologists and anthropologists is largely when I come to iPinch meetings and talk to George in between and so forth. And uh, I think part of this process of thinking about how the working groups are working or not working and, and what we're doing is, uh, is, is really going to, at this point, midstream here, is to sort of think about, well, how should we reconfigure them to a certain degree? One project that I did work on with George, largely, and, and this had to do with uh, uh, the uh, Inuit Studies Conference that was in uh, northern Quebec last, uh, last fall, uh, I, I saw that call for papers and thought, and really, I was feeling guilty because I'd been on iPad for two years and hadn't done anything. So I contacted George and said, you know, I was thinking to put an abstract in on this. Uh, would you like to work with me on that? And we did. So we gave a, uh, a, a presentation on intellectual property and the ethical legal status of human DNA and, and, uh, and titled, subtitled it The <coughs> Irrelevance of Context. So like, does it make a difference whether we're dealing with these issues from a health perspective, which I'm familiar with, or from an archaeology, anthropology perspective, that, uh, such as the one uh, uh, which most of you come from. And again, I, I sit here fascinated uh, each time I come to a meeting, I largely keep my mouth shut and just take it all in because it, it's a different world. You guys live in a different world than I do. And, uh, and you, uh, you have very interesting, fascinating questions, but you frame them differently than people do in my world. And, uh, and, and that's important because I can learn from you, but we can learn from each other and we have to find a way of, uh, of sort of uh, uh, collaborating around those things. And this is sort of a, um, I, I'm not going to go through the talk that, uh, I, j I just pulled out a few slides from the talk that we gave in, in uh, northern Quebec last year, and the, this uh, paper is actually going to be coming out in the uh, Journal of Inuit Studies that uh, Muriel is, uh, uh, is editing. Uh, but uh, we s sort of framed this, this whole issue in terms of bioarchaeology and health and, uh, and, and talked about the unique nature of, of human genetics and genetic information and, and, how, and, and the idea of genetic exceptionalism, which is a, a big topic within the health research area and, uh, and health law area, is whether is there, is there something exceptional about genetic information that, we, that requires that we have new laws, new policies in order to, uh, 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 to manage the what's going on in this area, or is, or, or is there really the laws, the policies, the privacy protections we have, the non-discrimination protections we have, the intellectual property protections we have already in existing laws, are they adequate to take care of, of, uh, of this new world that, as we move into the genomics era? Um, you're all familiar with the home, Human Genome Project. It was completed uh, almost 10 years ago now, and it's really reshaping the way healthcare is, is, is done. But it's, uh, it's also, of course, for any of you that do bioarchaeology bio and so forth and work with ancient DNA and so, so on, you're recognizing the, the kinds of issues that are raised in those areas as well. Those areas I'm not all that familiar with. Uh, the ones in the, on, the, on the health side I'm, I'm much more familiar with. I've learned, I learn a great deal from sitting here listening to what you people are doing. And I think that there's lots to be learned from your side of, uh, in talking with, with the people on the other side as well. So, uh, well, I, I'm not going to go through these slides because I'm probably just about talked my 10 minutes already. <laughs> but uh, uh, the ethical le legal status of human DNA, just the last one uh, there, legal scholars refer to human DNA as sui generis. It's, it's kind of a unique sort of entity that can uh, be, be treated quite differently depending on the context in terms of, uh, of, of what, how we think about it. Here's a... Uh, um, I can't read that down there because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, uh, human genetic data have a special status because, uh, and in the last bullet point, they, have, they <coughs> may have cultural significance for persons or groups. That's significant for, for what, uh, what you're working on here. Uh, this is from the Human Genome Organization. It says, uh, as a species, we all share in, in essence the same genome. This common genome allows for reproduction between all groups of mankind. At this collective level, the genome is a common heritage of humanity. Which is an interesting thing when we start thinking about ancient DNA and, and who has the right to control how that genetic information is uh, controlled. Because after we move back a certain number of generations, we're not just talking about 
First Nations anymore. We're talking about all of us to a certain degree. And, uh, and it's a story that we all share, uh, even though the DNA may be extracted from, uh, from bones that were uh, taken from an ancient burial site or something like that. And so there's, there are interesting issues there about who should control that story and who should control that information and, uh, and, and what are the, the, the ways of dealing with that. Um, uh, this is just a story from science. Uh, I'm not going to go, the gene patent thing is, a, is interesting, I wonder if I can go back to that for a second. You know, there are over, there, when I started, first started working with geneticists, they said there might be 100,000 genes in the, in the human genome. Now they're thinking there might be 25 to 30,000, they're not quite sure. There are over 300, or over 3 million genome-related patents filed with the, uh, with the U.S. Uh, uh, patent office. So that's, uh, that's more than uh, over 100 patent applications per gene in the human genome. Uh, so when you're talking about ancient DNA and that's that, uh, that portion of the genome that you're interested in, uh, it's qu quite likely that somebody's got a patent on that already and, uh, and has, some, has uh, some, some kind of uh, intellectual property interest in it. So uh, something to be aware of. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, this is actually, and this is interesting because this is CIHR, again, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, that have done significant work in, uh, in how do we work with Indigenous communities and so forth. And these guidelines, notice Article 8, community and individual concerns over and, cl uh, and claims to intellectual property should be explicitly acknowledged and addressed in the negotiation with the community prior to starting the research project. Again, these are health researchers that are interested in working in communities. I know Kelly Bannister was very much involved in, in, the, in the working group, but I felt that this group was underrepresented in, 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 that, uh, in that process. Uh, this now has become, I think, incorporated into the TCPS, uh, the Tri-Council Policy Statement and so forth. But the point again is that uh, they're doing good work in health, they're not, <laughs> they're not unaware of the issues, but they may not understand the issues in quite the way you, you, uh, they, they need to be uh, presented from your perspective. Um, and this is a, a, a concern that I've raised in a couple of things that I've written uh, uh, in this area is uh, about the genetic appropriation of culture because uh, in the genomics era, as we start putting more and more emphasis on the genetic component and so forth, we start redu reducing bio uh, uh, or culture to biology and that, uh, that, that can have a significant uh, impact. And this is a philosopher, Eric Young, said, no matter how great the potential of population genomics to show us our interconnections, if it begins by describing our differences, then it in inevitably will produce scientific wedges to hammer into the social cracks that already divide us. This was in, in, uh, in response to the Human Genome Diversity Project that was uh, uh, tried to get off the ground back in the 90s and has been largely replaced now by the Genograph Project through National Geographic. So just uh, some concluding thoughts. Um, uh, the shared nature of human DNA compels us to rethink some commonly accepted distinctions. What's the past? What is the pre present? And what, should the, what is the future? Uh, what's yours? What's mine? What's ours in terms of, uh, of this uh, intellectual property? Uh, how do we find the dead? And how do we find the, uh, define the living here? <coughs> and uh, again, the archaeological versus the health perspective. So there's lots of competing interests that doesn't mean that they're necessarily incompatible. And I think that we just have to carry on our conversations. And that's part of what our working group wants to do. Ha, 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 ha.